So this uh, tower with a cross on top, which is a ship's mast in fact, uh, is called Nelson's Column. It's Edinburgh's Nelson's Column as opposed to the one in Trafalgar Square. And it's meant to look like a, a bit like a telescope, uh, the design of it. And just below and to the right of that, you can see the green roof buildings. That's where the, the um, Royal High School moved to from High School Yards. It moved to there first, and now, as I say, it's down at the bottom of Dundas Street. Um, so these buildings are now sort of council buildings. Um, OK, but on uh, Colson Hill there's also, um, I'm not sure you can see it past the trees, but there's the uh, City Observatory, it's called now, a little sort of astronomical observatory with a dome, you know, and a telescope in the dome, you know, you can't see that, but, um, you know, so this is sort of, it does look like a typical um, observatory with this dome. Um, and that was um, originally, well, it, the building of it started in the sort of, uh, 1780s or thereabouts, um, uh, quite early, by uh, a man called Short, I think uh, I've forgotten his first name. Um, <clears throat> anyway, Short built this observatory as a sort of private enterprise thing to, for tourists, you know, to make money, you know, to charge tourists to look through the telescope. Um, but Colin McLaurin had already been collecting money um, from various, uh, you know, rich uh, donors to build an observatory on Colson Hill uh, for the university. And so when he got wind that Short was building one, you know, they sort of had a bit of a ding dong and eventually they decided they, you know, uh, that it would be a sort of joint enterprise. So uh, when this thing started up, it was meant to be, again, a bit like the museum, you know, partly for students and partly for the public. Um, after Short died, uh, his daughter, Maria Short, um, somehow was ousted and built another observatory on that place, uh, on Colton Hill, just as a completely private uh, affair, you know, sort of a money-making scheme. Um, but then, uh, I think in about, uh, I forget the dates, around about 1850, she was moved from there, uh, and she uh, opened up the what's now the Outlook Tower that we just walked, so we'll go back to that in a minute. Um, but... Uh, then the university took over the uh, observatory uh, and it became the Royal Observatory uh, in, I don't know, 54 or something like this. Uh, and the Astronomer Royals for Scotland were based there. Um, and uh, the second Astronomer Royal for Scotland was a man called Charles Piazzi Smythe. Um, and uh, he set up the, have you heard of the, the there's a one o'clock gun that goes off every day at one o'clock? Have you heard this? Yeah. Um, so uh, he was the one who instigated that. But first of all, he instigated, you see that, the Nelson's column, and it's got that cross uh, ship's mast at the, at the top of it. Can you see there's a black ball at the bottom of the mast? Yeah. If you come out here just before one o'clock any day, that black ball will be at the, at the cross piece of the mast. It will have lifted up, okay? And then at one o'clock precisely, it's released and it drops down. So people in the docks down on the ship, you know, uh, at the uh, uh, ships down in the docks at Leith, they can't hear the one o'clock gun, but they can see that drop, and so they know it's one o'clock. So uh, it's a sort of time, time piece, and it was the very first one. There's lots of these now, uh, you know, in other places, uh, but they were, it was invented by Charles Piazzi Smythe. Uh, so, um, and by the way, in those days, there used to be a cable that went from the observatory, a wire that went from the observatory up to the um, castle here where the cannon was. And the cannon was set off automatically by a pulse in the wire coming from uh, the observatory, sort of all this, all this way, in you know, the 19th century. Whereas latterly, it's just done by a man with his watch, you know, and he, and he sets it off. <laughs> so they've gone down, as it were. Uh, anyway, Charles Piazzi Smythe is also interesting because he's the only fellow of the Royal Society uh, to resign his uh, fellowship um, because he was sort of basically he was sort of hounded uh, by uh, you know fellow scientists who sort of saw him as. I mean, basically, I mean it's a complicated story, but basically he was a sort of uh, devout religious believer, and this was at a time, you know, uh, when. Uh, talking about after the publication of The Origin of Species and 
people like T.H. Huxley and so on were trying to make a divorce between science and religion, and they didn't like the fact that, you know, he was so religious, and so they sort of hounded him, and in the end, uh, as I say, he, he, was, he lost his post here, and he went down to Ripon in North Yorkshire in his retirement, uh, uh, but he also resigned his uh, fellowship at the Royal Society, so it's quite a sad story. Uh,